Now, before we get to the video, if you're new to the channel, I wanted to let you know that we try to stay up to date on all things 3D printing, from filament and printer reviews to in-depth slicer analysis, as well as a plethora of how-to videos. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be notified every time we post a new video. Hey guys, Technivers here. Today we are going over a couple of different types of bed adhesion for some of the newbies and rookies out there who don't quite know. Um, so I have a couple of models here and I'm going to show you some differences in the bottom surface, which is what's mainly affected by the adhesion type itself. So the first one we're going to start off with is no adhesion. Uh, this model actually came out really well. Um, you can see a little defect in the corner here, but for the most part, the bottom is super smooth. Now, a lot of times when you print with no adhesion, if your bottom layer is round or um, pretty much not square or triangular in shape, you will get lifting corners and things like that. And that's because as the plastic is running this way, this plastic is pulling it in. And if you build up from that layer, it's also pulling it up. Now, the way to fix that is to run what they call a brim. Now, this is a brim, as you can see. It is just a super thin layer of plastic around the outside. And what this does is applies tension to that bottom layer in an outward way. So basically, it pulls it out as this part's pulling it up which keeps it in place. It keeps it from curling up, which you don't want. Um, the other alternative to printing with a brim is my personal favorite, and this guy here is a raft. Now this actually comes off pretty easily, uh, and you don't get quite as fine a bottom surface as you do just printing off the PEI, but that's okay. Um, the nice thing about the raft, and you can see the thickness of it here, um, is that it goes down in separate grid layers, so it'll go sideways spaced apart lines and then it'll turn the other way and go back this way and the reason that that works really well is because after you get up a couple layers you end up with this smooth surface to print on which is really really nice so with this the thing you need to remember is um, this can actually save a print from a slightly unlevel bed uh, and the reason why is because if it's a little bit higher on this end it won't put as much plastic down on the bottom layer and then as it comes over here, it'll even out. And when it comes back to this side, it'll still be at the same height as this side. So um, this is basically creating your own level platform on the print bed and it works really, really well. Now, which adhesion type should you use? That is the question. There is another type that I didn't mention that's called the skirt. And with the skirt, your model's gonna come out like this, but it's going to print this outer line from the brim. Maybe a couple of them, there will be a gap between here. The reason for that is to purge any leftover plastic that may be in the nozzle before starting your actual model. So adhesion wise, the skirt and no adhesion are pretty much the same thing effectively as far as what it's going to do to your model. If you have a large flat surface on the bottom of your print, you're going to want to do a brim or a raft just to keep those edges from curling up. If you're putting a brim and or a raft on there and you're still getting edges lifting and curling, odds are you're printing in either PETG or ABS, um, which both have different amounts of warping depending on which plastic you're using. Now, ABS is the worst, and I've seen corners lift up off of the bed just from basically breathing on them. The temperature difference between your breath or a slight draft and the bed and the nozzle separates layers or causes it to separate from the bed and curl up. So um, there are ways to fix that. If you're having curling with ABS in particular, the adhesion will help a little bit, but your main fix for that is going to be to print a draft shield. Uh, and what that is is basically just a one perimeter wall it prints around the outside to keep it from getting hit with cold air and to keep the hot air inside and keep it at a similar temperature so it doesn't crack and split apart. Now, the best thing to do with ABS would be to use an enclosure, but uh, I do a lot of open air printing, and I don't have an enclosure. Creelty does make a nice pop-up enclosure for making ABS prints now that slides right over the Ender 3 and a couple other printers, and it looks really nice. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I do plan on getting one, but I also need to get more ABS first because it's not something I work with very often, and I used my last spool here recently. So um, we're getting a little off topic. Like I said, this video is supposed to be about adhesion type. Now, the thing is, you're going to know before your model even starts, especially with a raft, if your print is going to work out. Because if the raft doesn't work, your print's not going to work. But if the raft adheres and you're getting a nice even surface on the top layer, your model's going to stick right to that and it's going to come out very nice. 
The only downside really to the brim here is that it is attached to your model. You do need to remove it from the model. It comes off rather easily and we'll remove it like we remove the raft. You can see the benefit of this. I didn't get it quite cleanly. The benefit of the brim versus the raft. Now this texture here is because of the top surface of the raft. It's not as flat as my PEI. So I do get a better surface finish using the brim, but then I have to worry about cleaning up the outside edges and making sure that they are not uh, sharp or dull or anything like that. So and by dull, I mean um, sometimes when you pull away plastic, you get lighter colored white spots there where the plastic used to be. And it's obvious to tell that something was attached there and removed. And we don't want that. We want it to look like it was meant to be this way. Uh, it's a lot easier to remove if you just get a uh, burring tool and run it around the edge. But that is acceptable for now. Uh, in case you're wondering what this is, I can't put it on just yet because I don't have... I have the Z-Stop hooked up. But it's basically just an end cap cover for the uh, X-axis motor on an Ember 3. So... Uh, it was just a quick test print of something that was square, something that was flat on the bottom that I knew I could try with the three different adhesion types. So now that we've gone over that, I encourage you to play around with your own adhesion types. Um, and depending on which model you're using, like I said, you're going to want a different adhesion types. If I'm doing a sculpted model or a figurine or something like that, I will use a raft simply because it gives me a flatter base to print off of. And I can tell if I'm going to get a good print before I actually get to the model part of the printing. Like I said, if you're using something that is a large flat surface, you're going to want a brim to keep the corners and edges from curling up. And if you're just printing something small or you're not too worried about the shape being perfectly exact, feel free to go without adhesion. Um, this is the one that was printed without adhesion. Like I said, it came out really nice. It does have this little defect right here. I'm not sure what caused that, but if there had been a brim around the edge, I'm pretty sure that wouldn't be there because it would have been flat with the bottom of the model. So. Uh, that's it for this time, guys. Stay tuned. We will do a Bed Adhesion 102 at some point in the future. Uh, but for now, this has been Bed Adhesion 101. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. As always, thank you. I'll put a video up right here that you can check out for more of our stuff. And if you're still here and you haven't already, why don't you click right here and subscribe to the channel.